फिजिकल केमिस्ट्री चैप्टर नेम डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन लो नर्स डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन लो डेफिनेशन नर्स डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन लो स्टडीज द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ अ सोल्यूट बिटवीन टू इमिसेबल सोलवेंट इन कॉन्टेक्ट विद ईच अदर वेन अ सोल्यूट सोलबल इन टू इमिसेबल सोलवेंट इज एडिड टू अ मिक्सचर ऑफ दीज सोलवेंट्स द कंसनट्रेशन ऑफ सोल्यूशन इज इन बोथ द सोलवेंट लेयर इज डिफरेंट इन अदर वर्ड्स द सोल्यूट डिस्ट्रीब्यूट इट सेल्फ इन बोथ द सोलवेंट्स For example, when a dilute solution of iodine in water shaken with carbon tetrachloride, the iodine distribute between two immiscible solvent. Iodine is about eighty-six times more soluble in carbon tetrachloride than in water. Due to higher solubility, most of the iodine passes into CCl four layer. In simple words, iodine is distributed between two immiscible solvents, water and carbon tetrachloride. Nurst in 1891 showed that when a solute is added to a mixture of two immiscible liquids in both of which it dissolves then it distributes itself between both the liquid in such a way that the ratio of concentration of solute in both the liquid remains constant at constant temperature however this ratio is constant only when the solute has same molecular state in both the solvents that is the solute neither undergo association nor dissociation in both these solvents the generalization put forward by nurst is called nurst distribution law and is stated as a solute distribute itself between two non immiscible solvents in contact with each other in such a way that at equilibrium the ratio of concentration of solute in the two layer is constant at constant temperature provided in molecular state of solute is same in both the solvent if solute x distributes itself between solvent a and b the distribution law is written as concentration of x in solvent a divided by concentration of x in solvent b is is equals to c1 by c2 which is equals to k the constant k is term as the partition coefficient or distribution coefficient factors affecting partition coefficient first nature of solute nature of liquid pair temperature point first nature of solute for a liquid pair different solutes have different solubility hence the value of partition coefficient will be different for different solutes at a given temperature it is clearly seen in the from the data in table below liquid pair water and benzene solute benzoic acid its partition coefficient at 293 kelvin is 0.0274 liquid pair water and benzene solute succinic acid its partition coefficient at 293 kelvin is 0.096 second point is nature of liquid pair a given solute has given different partition coefficient in different liquid pairs as shown in table below liquid pair water and ether solute succinic acid its partition coefficient at 293 kelvin is 5.4323 liquid pair water and benzene solute succinic acid partition coefficient at 293 kelvin is 0.096 third point is temperature the solubility of a solute in a particular solvent changes with temperature as temperature is changed the solubility of a solute in a given liquid pair also changes therefore the partition coefficient also changes with temperature the change in value of partition coefficient for 1 degree rise in temperature is known as temperature coefficient however the value of temperature coefficient is generally small table below shows value diff value of temperature coefficient for some system system 1 acetic acid in water and ether its temperature coefficient is 0.0064 for a system succinic acid in water and ether its temperature coefficient is 0.55 next heading is experimental verification of distribution law solution of iodine in carbon tetrachloride of different concentration are shaken with water taken in different bottles these are allowed to stand undisturbed till the two layers separate out a known volume of ccl4 layer and aqueous layer is pipetted out and titrated against standard sodium thiosulfate solution 
and the concentration of iodine is determined. The following results from the distribution of iodine between CCl4 and water shows the constancy of ratio of concentration in each layer. Hence, prove the validity of distribution law. In table number 1, distribution of I2 between CCl4 and H2O at 20 degrees Celsius. Concentration of I2 in CCl4 is 0.02. Concentration of I2 in H2O is 0.0023. Its, co its distribution coefficient is 86.95. For second reading, concentration of I2 in CCl4 is 0.04, concentration of I2 in H2O is 0.00047, its distribution coefficient is 85.10. Next reading, concentration of I2 in CCl4 0.06, concentration of I2 in H2O is 0.0007 and its distribution coefficient is 85.71. These results shows that the ratio C1 by C2 is almost constant and the distribution law is valid in this case. Condition 4 Validity of Distribution Law Or we can say that limitation of nurse distribution law. The distribution law in its simple form that is K is equals to C1 by C2 does not hold under all conditions. Some limitations and conditions under which the law is applicable are as follows. Condition, the condition first is temperature should be kept constant. The solubility of a solute in both the liquid changes with temp change in temperature. This may result in change in concentration in both the solvent. Moreover, change in temperature may affect the mutual solubility of the two solvents. Therefore, with change in temperature, a different value of partition coefficient is obtained at every temperature. Hence, the temperature should be kept constant throughout the distribution of partition coefficient. Point second, the two solvents should be immiscible or sparingly soluble. The point three, the mutual solubility of the two solvents should not be affected by addition of solute. Point four, the solution should be dilute. Distribution law holds good for distribution dilute solution as concentration of solute increases, the deviation from distribution law become more and more pronounced. Point number 5. The molecular state of solute should be same in both the solvent. This law is not valid under following two conditions. First condition is when the solute undergo association. The law in simple form is not applicable when the solute undergo association in any of the solvent. For example, distribution law does not hold for phenol distributed between benzene and water because Phenol undergo association in benzene to form dimers. Condition second is when the solute undergo dissociation, the distribution law is also not valid for solute which undergo dissociation in any of the solvent. For example, electrolyte like HCl undergo dissociation in water, hence its solution in a mixture of water and an organic solvent such as benzene, carbon tetrachloride, carbon disulfide etc does not obey distribution law in its simple form. Worked example based on distribution law. We have given that in our first example in the distribution law of iodine between CS2 and water the following results were obtained. The concentration of iodine in water 0 0.1 gram, 0 0.161, 0 0.314, 0 0.423. The concentration of iodine of CS2 is 41, 66, 129, 174 respectively. Calculate the distribution constant of iodine between CS2 and water. What would be predicted regarding the molecular state of iodine in these solvents? So for first condition, the distribution constant value will be 410.0. For second condition, the distribution constant value will be 409.3. For third, distribution coefficient value will be 410.8. And fourth condition, the distribution coefficient value will be 411.1. Keeping in view the environmental error, these values are fairly constant and hence the distribution constant is approximately 410. The constancy of the ratio indicates that 
iodine dissolve in both the solvents without any change in its molecular state this shows that iodine exists in normal molecular state in both these solvents heading number next modification of distribution law with change in molecular state of solute not showed that the ratio c1 by c2 is constant that is k is equals to c1 by c2 is applicable only when the solute has same molecular condition in both the liquids that means solute does not undergo association or dissociation in any of the liquid however if any such change take place in one or both liquids then the distribution law get modified let us consider cases in which a solute may associate or dissociate or enter into chemical combination with one of the solvent case first when solute solute undergo association in one of the solute suppose the solute x remains in the normal molecular state in phase 1 whereas in phase second n molecules of x undergo association to form complex molecules xn solute x undergo association in solvent second here two equilibria exist simultaneously that is first one is x is in equilibrium with x and nx is in equilibrium with xn suppose the total concentration of solute x in phase 1 is c1 the total concentration of solute x in phase 2 is c2 if alpha is the degree of association of solute in phase second then the concentration of associated molecule in phase second that is xn is equals to 1 by n c2 alpha the concentration of normal molecules in phase is equals to 1 minus alpha c2 applying distribution law to the distribution of x in two solvents we can write concentration of x in phase 1 divided by concentration of normal molecules of x in phase second which is equals to k c1 by 1 minus alpha c2 is equals to k applying law of chemical equilibrium to the polarization process nx in equilibrium with xn we can write the equilibrium constant k eq as concentration of associated molecule in phase second divided by concentration of normal molecules in phase second of whole the power n is equals to k equilibrium 1 by n c2 alpha divided by 1 1 minus alpha whole multiplied by c2 and whole to the power n is equals to k equilibrium taking nth root on both the sides n under root c2 alpha divided by 1 minus alpha multiplied by c2 is equals to constant dividing equation first by second we get c1 by n under root c2 alpha k by k equilibrium is equals to constant however when the molecule in phase second are completely associated that is alpha is equals to 1 However when the molecule in phase second are completely associated that is alpha is equals to 1 then equation becomes c1 by n under root c2 is equals to constant this relation is used in determining the value of n the extent of association of molecule the value of c1 and c2 are determined experimentally and substituted in equation putting n is equals to 1 2 3 etc the value for which a nearly constant value of k is obtained is equals to n the equation number 4 has been verified by studying the distribution of benzoic acid between water and benzene benzoic acid exists almost entirely as dimer that is c6h5coh whole twice in benzene but in normal state in water case second when the solute undergoes dissociation in one of the solvent let the solute x dissolve in phase second in its normal state and undergo dissociation in solvent second the two equilibria existing simultaneously are first x in equilibrium with x and x in equilibrium with a plus b total concentration of x in phase 1 is c1 total concentration of x in phase 2 is c2 the degree of dissociation of solute in phase second is alpha the concentration of undistributed dissociated molecules in phase second is 1 minus alpha c2 applying distribution law the ratio of concentration of solute in equilibrium is given by c1 by c2 multiplied by 1 1 minus alpha is equals to k on the other hand when the solute is di dissociated in phase 1 
having degree of dissociation alpha and remains undissociated in phase second then the partition coefficient is given by c1 multiplied by 1 minus alpha divided by c2 is equals to k case third when the solute is dissociated in both the solvents it is evident that the concentration of solute in layer 1 is c1 multiplied by 1 minus alpha in layer second is c2 1 minus alpha where alpha is degree of dissociation of solute the partition coefficient is given by c2 multiplied by 1 minus alpha divided by c1 multiplied by 1 minus alpha is equals to k case 4 when the solute enters into chemical combination with one of the solvents suppose the solute x remain in normal molecular state in solvent 1 but one molecule of x combines with n molecules of solvent in phase second to form x multiplied by by n s molecules following equilibria exist simultaneously first is x in equilibrium with x and x plus n s in equilibrium with x dot n s let the concentration of solute in normal molecular state in phase 1 is c1 total concentration of x in normal state in phase second is c2 concentration of solvent molecule in phase second is cs concentration of complex molecule in phase second is cs applying distribution law to equation number first we get c1 by c2 is equals to k applying law of chemical equilibrium to equilibrium second we get cc divided by c2 into cs power n is equals to k1 in dilute solution the concentration of solute solvent in phase second is an exceed therefore the its concentration cs remains practically constant the equation second takes the form cs by c2 is equals to k1 into cs ki power n is equals to k2 adding 1 to both sides 1 plus cs by c2 is equals to 1 plus k2 which is further is equals to c2 plus cs divided by c2 is equals to 1 plus k2 divide equation first by third we get c1 by c2 multiplied by c2 c2 plus cc is equals to k by k plus k2 c1 by c2 plus cc is equals to k by 1 plus k2 is equals to k3 c2 plus cc is equals to total concentration of normal molecules and solvated solute molecules in phase second concentration total concentration of solute x in phase 1 divided by total concentration of solute x in phase second is equals to constant it is evident that when the solute molecule enters into chemical combination with solvent molecules the distribution law does not get modified however there is change in numerical value of the constant next heading is thermodynamic derivation of distribution law the derivation of distribution law from thermodynamic is based on the condition that in phase equilibrium between two immiscible liquid containing same solute dissolved in them the chemical potential of the solute must be same in both phases suppose a solute is present in two immiscible solvent a and b in contact with each other the chemical potential in solvent a is ua and in solvent b is ub at equilibrium the chemical potential of solute in both the phases is equal that is equals to ua is equals to ub for thermodynamics we know chemical potential of a substance is given as mu is equals to mu not plus rt ln a where mu not is the standard chemical potential and a is the activity of solute in solution therefore ua is equals to u mu not a plus rt ln a a mu b is equals to mu not b plus rt ln a by b mu not a plus rt ln a is equals to mu not b plus rt ln a b rt ln a a divided by a b is equals to mu not a minus mu not a ln a a divided by a b is equals to mu not b minus mu not a divided by rt at constant temperature the standard chemical potential mu not a and mu not b for a given solute in a particular solvent are constant since r is also constant it follows that ln a capital a divided by a capital b is equals to constant a a by a b is equals to constant since the solutions are dilute therefore activities are equals to concentration so equation becomes ca divided by cb is equals to constant which is further is equals to k 
this is nurse distribution law it is applicable in this form when the solute is normally distributed in both the layers however it get modified in the cases when the solute undergo association dissociation or enters into chemical combination with one of the solvent next heading is application of distribution law there are main, many application of distribution law in laboratory and in industry some of these are briefly discussed here first application is in calculating solubility of a solute in a solvent when a solute is shaken with two immiscible solvents in contact with each other at equilibrium both the solvents are saturated with the solute therefore the concentration at equilibrium are equal to solubility of solute in both solvents we can write distribution law as c1 by c2 is equals to s1 by s2 is equals to k where c1 is equals to s1 the solubility of solute in solvent 1 c2 is equals to s2 the solubility of solute in solvent second hence knowing the value of distribution constant k and the solubility of solute in one of the solvent the solubility in other solvent can be calculated second application is distribution indicator certain solvents can appreciably dissolve even the small amount of solute present in some other solvents when such a solvent is added to a dilute solution of solute in some other solvent most of the solute get distributed into this solvents hence it act as an indicator for presence of even a small amount of solute for example as a dilute solution of iodine in water is almost colorless iodine is considerably soluble soluble in cs2 its distribution coefficient between cs2 and water is 400 therefore an extremely dilute solution of iodine can be estimated by adding a few drops of cs2 to its aqueous solution a sufficient amount of iodine passes into cs2 layer and gives it a deep blue deep violet color this solution may be titrated against hypo sodium thiosulfate solution till the violet color in cs2 layer disappears hence cs2 can serve as indicator distribution indicator in iodometric titration in which iodine is produced during titration the third application is in determining extent of association or dissociation of a solute in a solvent using distribution law the molecular state of a solute in a solvent can be determined in the distribution experiment if the ratio of concentration of solute in both the solvent that is c1 by c2 is constant then solute behaves normally in both the solvents when a solute x undergoes association in one of the solvent that is nx is in equilibrium with xn having concentration c2 in it then the distribution law modifies as c1 by n under root c2 is equals to k from the value of n the molecular mass of solute in the solvent can be calculated by multiplying the actual molecular mass by n for example benzoic acid in a mixture of water and benzene exists as dimer in benzene hence the value of n is equals to 2 therefore the molecular mass of benzoic acid in benzene is 2 into 122 is equals to 242 44 the value of n in above expression can be calculated by one of the following method method first is heat and trial method the value of c1 and c2 are obtained experimentally and c1 by n under root c2 is equals to k are put in the following equations then putting n is equals to 2 3 4 the corresponding value of k are calculated the number which gives a constant value for k is the correct value of n the method second is logarithm method we have the equation c1 by n under root c2 is equals to k c1 by c 2 power 1 by n is equals to k c1 is equals to c2 power 1 by n multiplied by k taking log on both the sides we get that log c1 is equals to 1 by n multiplied by log c2 plus log k for two experimental values c1 c2 and c1 dash plus c2 dash we can write log c1 log c1 is equals to 1 by n into log c2 plus log k log c1 dash is equals to 1 by n multiplied by log c2 dash plus log k on subtracting equation second from equation first we get log c1 minus log c1 dash is equals to 1 by n multiplied by log c2 minus log c2 dash which further get that n is equals log c2 minus log c2 dash whole divided by log c1 minus log c1 dash 
hence n can be calculated similarly when a solute dissociates in one of the solvent in which its concentration is c2 but the distribution law is applicable as c1 divided by c2 multiplied by 1 minus alpha is equals to k thus if the degree of dissociation alpha of a solute is known at one concentration the value of alpha at any other concentration can be obtained using above equation since k is constant application number 4 in the study of chemical equilibrium involving formation of complex ion an important application of distribution law is to study equilibria involving complex ion consider some reaction involving formation of complex ion ki plus k2 gives ki3 i negative plus i2 gives ki3 negative which is a complex ion kbr plus br2 gives kbr3 Br negative plus Br two gives Br three negative, which is a complex ion. CuSO four plus four NH three gives CuNH four NH three four SO three. Cu two positive plus four NH three gives CuNH four. Whole carries two positive charge is a complex ion. Using distribution law, equilibrium constant of any of these reaction can be calculated. On the basis of constancy in the value of equilibrium constant, the formula of the co complex can be find out. The application of distribution law in determining the value of complex ion I three negative is described as follows. Point first: A solution of iodine in CS two is shaken with water to determine the different distribution coefficient of iodine between CS two and water. Point second: A solution of iodine in CS two of known concentration say A moles per liter is shaken with a aqueous solution of Ki of known concentration say B moles per liter. Point third. After the equilibrium is established between two layers, the concentration of iodine left in CS two layer is determined volumetrically by titrating is it against standard hypo sodium thiosulfate solution. The equilibrium constant is calculated as follows: Let the initial concentration of iodine in CS two layer is equals to a moles per liter. The initial concentration of Ki solution is Equal to B moles per liter distribution coefficient of I two between CS two and water is equals to K. Concentration of I two left in CS two layer is equals to C moles per liter in aqueous layer. I two react with K I. Therefore, total concentration of iodine in aqueous layer will be much higher due to formation of soluble complex K I three. Total concentration of I T I D I two. Three plus combined in aqueous layer. Initial concentration of I two into C S two minus concentration of I two left in C S two layer is equals to A minus C moles per liter. Concentration of free I two in aqueous layer can be calculated according to distribution law. Concentration of free I two in aqueous layer divided by concentration of I two in C S two layer is equals to K. But the concentration of I two in C S two layer is C moles per liter. Concentration of free I two in aqueous layer is equals to K C moles per liter. The concentration of I two that has combined with K I is equals to A minus C minus K C moles per liter, which is further is equals to D moles per liter. According the, to this reaction, K I plus I two gives K I three. Number of moles of I two combined is equals to number of moles of K I three combined, which is further is equals to number of moles of K I three formed. Concentration of Ki three in aqueous layer is d moles per liter. Concentration of Ki in aqueous layer b minus d moles per liter. Concentration of I two in aqueous layer is equals to k c moles per liter. Applying law of chemical equilibrium, we can write k dash is equals to Ki three concentration divided by Ki concentration into I two concentration. Taking different initial concentration of I two and Ki solution, the value of k dash is Calculated for each set, the concentrancy of value of K dash shows formula of complex is K I three or that of complex I N L is I three negative. Application number five in process of extraction. Another important application of distribution law is in process of extraction, in laboratory as well as in industry. In laboratory, for instance, it is frequently used for removal of dissolved organic substance for aqueous solution with solvents such as benzene ether chloroform carbon tetrachloride etc the advantage is taken of fact that the partition coefficient of most of the organic compound is largely in favor of organic solvents in industry process of extraction is used to remove impurities from the product the aqueous solution of substances to be extracted is shaken with an organic solvent in which it is highly soluble 
After shaking vigorously, the sol mixture is allowed to stand for some time. Two, the two layers are then separated using a separating funnel. The organic solvent is recornered by distillation and used again. For the extraction process to be more efficient, following conditions should be fulfilled. First condition, the distribution coefficient of the substance between the extracting solvent and the solvent in which it is already dissolved should be very high in favor of extracting solvent. Sometimes, the distribution coefficient in the extracting solvent is artificially increased by making the substance less soluble in aqueous layer. This can be done by adding some substance which decrease the degree of dissociation of compound in aqueous layer. For example, acetic acid which weakly anises in aqueous solution is to be extracted with ether. The strong acid say HCl is added to solution due to ionization of HCl. The H positive concentration increases and due to common ion effect, the ionization of CH3COOH is suppressed. As a result, there is greater concentration of unanized acetic acid, hence greater amount of acid will be extracted in ether layer. Similarly, the extraction of organic base from its aqueous solution into organic solvent can be increased by adding strong inorganic base. In general, distribution coefficient increase in favor of extracting solvent. This is termed as salting out effect. Thus, we conclude that the greater the distribution coefficient in favor of organic solvent, greater will be amount extracted. Point second, to cover the maximum amount of substance, the extracting solvent should be not used in one lot, rather it should be used in maximum number of installments. This is called multiple extraction or multi-step ext extraction. The fact that it is more efficient to use extracting solvent in small proportion rather than in one lot is illustrated as follows. Suppose a gram of the substance is present in 1 liter of aqueous solution. We can write the substance with ether as a distribution coefficient of substance between ether and water is 2. We provided with 1 liter of ether which may be used in 1 lot or 2 installment of 500 cc each. First, using all ether in 1 installment. Let x gram of substance be extracted in the extracting solvent. Then the amount of substance left in aqueous layer is equals to 1 minus x gram. Concentration in ether is equals to x by 1000. Concentration in water a minus x divided by 1000. According to distribution law, concentration of ether divided by concentration of water is equals to k. x by 1000 further divided by a minus x by 1000 is equals to 2. x is equals to 2 by 3a which is further is equals to 0 0.67a. Thus, only 67% of the total amount will be extracted. Second way is extraction using 500 ml of ether. Let x1 gram of substance be extracted in the first installment of 500 ml. Thus, concentration in ether is equal to x1 by 500. Concentration in water is equal to 1 minus x1 by 1000. Concentration of ether divided by concentration of water is equal to 2. x1 by 500 whole divided by a minus x1 divided by 1000 is equals to 2. x is equals to 1 by 2a. 50% of substance will be extracted in one installment. The substance left in aqueous layer a minus 1 minus a is equals to 1 by 2a. Now 1 liter of aqueous solution containing 1 by 2a gram of substance is extracted with 500 ml of ether. Let x2 gram of substance be removed from aqueous layer into 500 ml ether. Concentration in ether x2 by 500, concentration in water is equal to 1 by 2a minus x2. Concentration of ether divided by concentration of water is equal to 2. x2 by 500 whole divided by 1 minus 2a minus x whole divided by 1000 is equal to 2. x2 is equal to 1 by 4a. Hence, 25% of substance is extracted into ether layer. Total amount of substance extracted is equal to 50 plus 25 is equal to 75 percent. Thus, when the substance is extracted using 2 500 ml portion of solvent, the percentage of extraction increases from 66.66 to 75. Similarly, it can be shown that using the same 1 liter of solvent in 4 instrument of 250 ml each, 93.75 percent of the substance can be extracted. Thus, it can be concluded to do more efficient extraction, it is better to use a con given quantity of solvent in small proportion. However, it must be noted that it is not possible to extract whole of the undissolved substance. However, 
लार्ज नंबर ऑफ एक्सट्रैक्शन मे बी कैरिड आउट एवरी टाइम द सबस्टांस डिस्ट्रीब्यूट इज सेल्फ बिटवीन टू सोलवेंट्स एंड सम अमाउंट इज लेफ्ट अन एक्सट्रेक्टेड जनरल फॉर्मूला फॉर सबस्टांस लेफ्ट अन एक्सट्रेक्टेड अ जनरल एक्सपेक्शन टू कैलकुलेट अमाउंट ऑफ सबस्टांस लेफ्ट अन एक्सट्रेक्टेड आफ्टर अ गिवन नंबर ऑफ ऑपरेशन इज डिराइव एज बिलो सपोज डब्ल्यू ग्राम ऑफ सबस्टांस इज प्रेजेंट इन वी एम एल ऑफ द सोल्यूशन मेड बाई यूजिंग सोलवेंट ए इट इज एक्सट्रेक्टेड विद एक्सट्रेक्टिंग सोलवेंट बी यूजिंग स्मॉल वी एम एल ऑफ बी ईच टाइम के इज द पार्टीशन कोफिशन ऑफ सबस्टांस बिटवीन सोलवेंट ए एंड बी लेट डब्ल्यू वन ग्राम बी द अमाउंट ऑफ सबस्टांस लेफ्ट अन एक्सट्रेक्टेड इन सोलवेंट ए आफ्टर फर्स्ट एक्सटेंड एक्सट्रेक्शन द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कोफिशन एट फर्स्ट स्टेज इज गिवन एज concentration of substance in original solvent a divided by concentration of substance in extracting solvent b is equals to k w1 by v divided by capital w minus w1 divided by v is equals to k small v1 small v is equals to k v w minus k v w1 w1 is equals to k v plus v which is further is equals to k v w K one is equals to W one is equals to K V by K V plus small v whole multiplied by W. Note after the second extraction, if V two gram is the amount left unextracted in solvent A, then amount of substance extracted in V two minus V one minus V two gram for distribution law V two divided by capital V. Divided by v one minus v two divided by small v is equals to k. V two is equals to v one multiplied by k v divided by k v plus small v. Substituting value of w one, v two is equals to capital V divided multiplied by k one k v divided by k v plus k v whole square. So v n is equals to so wn is equals to capital w multiplied by kv divided by kv plus small v to the power n to make extraction process more efficient wn should be smallest possible this can happen this can happen if the term kv divided by kv plus small v whole to the power n is made as possible small as possible in this term the denominator kv plus small v is bigger than numerator kv hence the factor kv divided by kv plus small v is less than 1 therefore factor kv divided by kv plus v whole raised to power n will be least for get a value of n hence efficiency of extraction hence the efficiency of extraction increases by increasing the number of extraction using only a small amount of extracting solvent each time thus it is obvious that better efficiency can be achieved by keeping v small and n large so it follows that the multi step extraction is more economical than single step extraction also it is clear from equation number 4 that wn can never be equal to 0 however large value of n may be that is it is not possible to extract whole of the undissolved substance however large number of extraction may be carried out every time the remaining substance distributes itself between the two solvents according to distribution law the principle of multi step extraction is applicable to washing of precipitate in repeated washing of precipitate with small quantity of solvent the impurities are extracted to a large extent the principle of extraction is used in parquet process for desilverization of lead silver is more soluble in zinc than in lead the ar argentiferous lead is melted and heated in 880 degrees celsius and then molten zinc is added molten zinc is immiscible with molten lead hence form two miscible liquid in contact with each other and silver behave as a solute which is more soluble in zinc than in lead the partition coefficient of silver in favor of zinc is 300 at 880 degrees celsius silver therefore passes readily from the heavier lead layer into the lighter zinc layer which is then separated by repeating the process 3 to 4 times almost the entire amount of silver passes into zinc layer hence almost whole of the silver can be extracted from argentiferous lead the sixth application of distribution law is in determination of degree of hydrolysis hydrolysis is defined as process in which water react with solvent to form an acid and a base some term related to salt hydrolysis first is hydrolysis constant a general hydrolysis reaction of salt ab can be written as ab plus h to give ha plus boh applying law of chemical equilibrium the equilibrium constant can be written as 
K is equals to concentration of HA multiplied by concentration of BOH whole divided by concentration of BA multiplied by concentration of H2O. Since concentration of water H2O is very large, it is regarded as practically constant. So, the first expression can be written as concentration of HA multiplied by concentration of BOH whole divided by concentration of BA is equals to K into concentration of H2O which is further is equals to KH where KH is the hydrolysis constant. HA and BOH are the molar concentration of acid and base produced and BA is the molar concentration of unhydrolyzed salt. The above expression can be written as KH is equals to concentration of free radical into concentration of free base whole divided by concentration of unhydrolyzed salt. Second is degree of hydrolysis. The degree of hydrolysis of a salt may be defined as fraction of total amount of salt which is hydrolyzed at point of equilibrium. For example, in an aqueous solution of aniline, hydrochlorine, 80% of its hydrolyzed into aniline and hydrochloric acid. Then the degree of hydrolysis is 0.80%. The degree of hydrolysis is represented as H. Mathematically, H is written as H is equals to number of moles of salt hydrolyzed divided by total number of moles of salt. Next heading is expression for degree of hydrolysis of different type of salt. The salts of strong acid and strong base such as NaCl, Na2SO4, KCl, KNO3 etc. do not undergo hydrolysis. Therefore, for such salts, expression for KH and H are not written. These constant for the other three types of salts are discussed here. First is salt of weak acid and weak base. The hydrolysis reaction of salt BA is written as BA plus H2O gives BOH plus HA, where BOH is strong base and HA is weak acid. In aqueous solution, BA and strong BOH undergo complete dissociation, whereas HA being weak acid remain undissociated. Therefore, we can write that B positive A negative plus H2O give B positive plus OH negative plus HA. Next reaction is A negative plus H2O gives OH negative plus HA. Thus, the salt of weak acid and strong base undergo ionic hydrolysis. If the initial concentration of salt is C moles per liter and H is its degree of hydrolysis, we can write that initial concentration of A negative is C and initial concentration of OH plus HA is 0. The concentration at equilibrium of A negative is C multiplied by 1 minus H and Concentration of equilibrium at OH and HA is CH. We can write that KH is equals to concentration of OH negative multiplied by concentration of HA whole divided by concentration of A negative. It is equals to CH into CH divided by 1 minus 1 minus H. It is equal to CH square divided by 1 minus H. If H is quite small as compared to 1, then 1 minus H is equals to 1 and above expression becomes KH is equals to CH square. H square is equals to KH by C. H is equals to under root KH by C. H is directly proportional to 1 by C. Square root. Thus, degree of hydrolysis of a salt of a weak acid and strong base is inversely proportional to square root of its molar mass. Second is salt of strong acid and weak base. The general hydrolysis reaction for salt BA is written as BA is plus H2O gives BOH plus HA, where BOH is weak base and HA is strong acid. The salt BA and strong acid HA are completely dissociated. Therefore, we can write that B positive plus H negative plus H2O give BOH plus HA, H positive plus BA negative. B positive plus H2O gives BOH plus H positive. The KH is equals to concentration of BOH multiplied by concentration of H positive divided by concentration of B positive which is equal to CH into CH divided by C into 1 minus H which is equals to CH square by 1 minus H is equals to KH. H is very very small than 1 so CH square is equals to KH. H square is equals to under root KH by C. H is equals to KH by C. Third is salt of weak acid and weak base. The salt of weak acid and weak base BA undergoes hydrolysis as BA is equals to BA plus H2O gives BOH plus HA. 
where BOH is weak base and HA is weak acid. The weak acid and weak base are weakly dissociated but the salt BA is completely dissociated. Thus we can write that B positive plus B negative plus H2O gives BOH plus HA. B positive plus A negative plus H2O gives BOH plus HA. Initial concentration of B positive and A negative is C and initial concentration of BOH plus HA is 0. Concentration at equilibrium is C 1 minus H and concentration of BOH plus HA at equilibrium is CH. So KH is equals to concentration of BOH into concentration of HA divided by concentration of B positive plus concentration of A positive which is equals to CH into CH divided by C square 1 minus H whole square. H is very very less than 1 so we can write that KH is equals to H square where H square is equals to KH under root. It is important to note that expression does not involve concentration term C and degree of hydrolysis of a such salt is independent of concentration of salt solution. Application of distribution law in determining degree of hydrolysis. Aniline hydrochloride C6H5 NH2HCl is a salt of weak base and a strong acid. Its degree of hydrolysis is determined as follows. Step 1. Determination of hydrolysis constant. Aniline hydrochlorine is hydrolyzed according to reaction. C6H5NH3Cl plus H2O gives C6H5NH3 positive OH negative plus ACL. So KH is equals to concentration of free aniline into concentration of free HCl divided by unhydrolyzed salt. To calculate the above concentration, an aqueous solution of aniline hydrochloride of known concentration is shaken with known volume of benzene. On standing the mixture separates into two layers, free aniline get distributed between water and benzene, while HCl and unhydrolyzed salt remain in the aqueous layer. First, determination of concentration of free aniline in the aqueous layer. A known volume of benzene is taken out and solvent is evaporated. Then the weight of aniline left behind is found. From this, the concentration of aniline in benzene layer is calculated. The concentration of aniline in aqueous layer can be calculated using distribution law. Point second, distribu determination of concentration of free HCl in aqueous layer. From hydrolysis reaction, it is clear that number of moles of HCl set free is equals to total number of moles of aniline produced. Further, total amount of aniline produced is equals to amount of aniline present in aqueous layer plus amount of aniline in benzene layer. The concentration of free aniline in aqueous layer and benzene layer is calculated in step first above. From these value, number of moles of free HCl produced is also calculated. From the solution of aqueous layer and the number of moles of HCl, the concentration of free HCl in aqueous layer can be calculated. Point 3. Determination of concentration of unhydrolyzed salt in aqueous layer. Again from hydrolysis equation, it is seen that number of moles of aniline hydrochloride hydrolyzed is equal to total number of moles of free aniline or HCl produced. The quantity of RHS has been calculated in step 3rd. Therefore, the number of moles of aniline hydrochloride hydrolyzed is obtained when this is subtracted from initial number of moles of salt, the number of moles of unhydrolyzed salt can be calculated from the volume of aqueous layer, the concentration of unhydrolyzed salt can be calculated. Substituting the value of calculated step first, second, third in equation first, the hydrolysis constant KH of salt can be calculated. Point four, calculation of degree of hydrolysis of aniline. After calculating the hydrolysis constant KH as discussed above, for a solution of salt having concentration C moles per liter, the degree of hydrolysis can be calculated using expression KH is equals to KH divided by C whole under root. So, this is the chapter distribution law of physical chemistry, third sample.